It's me, Free Reads! Let's read, sing, and explore all about animals. We're reading Whole Whale. Written by Karen Yin. Illustrated by Nelika Veruf. An empty page. It's time to play. The animals are on their way. Oh boy, what animals do you see coming in? Here's one. Dee 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 dee. A spider. And down here. Bah. A sheep. How about this one? <laughs> it's a cat. I wonder who else is coming. Oh, 100 might fit in this tail, but can we fit a whole blue whale? I don't know if we can fit a whole whale, friends, but do you see any more animals than before? Oh, how about this one? It's a snake. Oh, and how about this one? It's an elephant. Oh, one more. This one? It's a big blue fin. Could that be the big blue whale? A mink, a moose, a mouse caboose, a monkey, and a mother goose. A mink, a moose, a mouse caboose, a monkey, and a mother goose. Honk, honk. A croc, a hawk, a shark, a snail. But can we fit a whole blue whale? What do you think, friends? Can we fit a whole blue whale here? <sighs> I don't know. That's a lot already. A hippo hoof, a taper trunk, a sloth, a moth, a skink, a skunk. Ooh. Here comes a camel and a quail. But can we fit a whole blue whale? My friends, do you see the camel? What color is it? It's yellow, here. Hump, hump, a camel. So, if they all can get along, 100 might fit in this throng. A hundred animals. Friends, who is new on this page? An octopus. Oh, there's room for more. A beak, a scale, but can we fit a whole blue whale? A pod, a pack, a pride, a prowl. Just listen to them howl and growl. Let's make some room. Don't block the trail, but can we fit a whole blue whale? too crowded in this book. What other animals do you see now? Uh -huh. Oh, so many, many, many. The answer that we must unveil, how can we fit the poor blue whale? Friends, how can we fit the whale when there are all these other animals? Can you name Another animal? What do you see? Hmm. I see a giraffe. And I see two lions. 
I even see a bumblebee. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Animals fast and slow. Who's fast? Hmm? A cheetah. And who is slow? A sloth is slow. Let's turn the next page like a sloth. <laughs> when everybody makes some space, one more can always find a place. Push! Let's make some room. Push! Push! Harder! Push! 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 Oh, friends, they're all making room and who's coming? That tail belongs to a... 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 Friends, let's push! Let's make room for the whole whale. Ready? Push! Now this way. Push! Harder! Push! The whole whale fits. They had a plan. Now count 100 if you can. Can you find all 100 animals? The mixed up In Five Easy Steps by Nicola Winstanley and John Martz. How to give your cat a bath in five easy steps. Step one, fill the bathtub with warm water. That is too much water. Oops. Step one, Put a little warm water in the bath. This much? Ah, sigh. Step one, put a little warm water in the bath. The water should come up to your cat's knees. Knees? Oh. 
Step two, put your cat in the... Wait, where is the cat? Mr. Flea? Mr. Flea, where are you? Don't you want to be clean? Have you found Mr. Flea yet? Hmm? can't find him anywhere. Maybe we should start again. Step one, find your- Step one, have some milk and cookies. You will need some energy. Hmm? Fine. Step one, have some milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, find your cat. Uh. Step three, put your cat in the... Hold on, is the water still warm? Uh, I think it's cold. Step four, hold your cat in one arm and turn on the tap with your other... Mr. Flea, wait! Uh. Step five, chase your cat down the stairs. Step six, run back to the bathroom. I, th I thought you said there were only five steps. Step six, run. Step seven, turn off the water. Oh no. Step eight, mop the floor. Step nine, find... Step nine, have another cookie. Step ten, find your cat. Uh, again. <laughs> oh! How to give your cat a bath in one easy step. Step one, sit quietly while your cat licks himself clean. Mm, the end. Goldfish! Goldfish!
children, children, what do you see? <laughs> Click, clack, moo. Cows that type. Click, clack, moo. Cows that type. By Doreen Cronin. Pictures by Betsy Lewin. <laughs> Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears click clack moo. Click clack moo. Click clack moo. Click clack moo. Click -clack -moo. Click -clack -moo. Click -clack -moo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click clack moo. Click clack moo. Clickety clack moo. Click clack moo. Click clack moo. Clickety clack moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed. No milk, no eggs. No eggs? cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click clack moo. Click clack moo. Clickety clack moo. Cows that type. Hens on strike. Whoever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand Moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. <laughs> The next morning, he got a note. Not again! Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click quack quack. Click quack quack. Click quack quack. quack. Click -quack, -quack. -quack, -quack, -quack. The end. Caterpillar, the 
very hungry. Caterpillar, the very hungry. Caterpillar, what will he eat next? He ate through one apple. But he was still hungry. He ate through two pears and one apple. But he was still hungry. by Jacob Suva. Friends, what do you know about butterflies? I know they're very pretty. Do you know anything gross about butterflies? Hmm. Hi, I'm a butterfly and everyone knows that butterflies are pretty. We flutter through meadows, we pose on fancy flowers, we show off our wings, we shimmer with all the colors of the rainbow. So majestic! Don't you look lovely? Oh, go on! Yes, butterflies are beautiful. Is that all you wanted to know about butterflies? Great, then don't turn the page. Huh? Close this book. You're done. The story's over. Nothing to see here. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Friends, should we close the book and finish the story now? No, there's plenty more pages. But... Hmm, should we keep going? Let's see. Huh, you kept reading. Well, there's much more you could learn about butterflies. The truth would surprise you. It would gross you out. Don't read any further unless you're ready for the real story. Friends, what do you think? Are you ready for the real story? This is your last chance to close this book. Don't say I didn't warn you because I did. Should we close it? I warned you. Here we go. Some butterflies are gross. They eat rotten food. They land on moldy fruit and slurp up the juices. They also eat dead animals. The slimier, the better. Mmm, deliciously disgusting. Oh, would you eat that rotting fruit? I know I wouldn't, but a butterfly would. Some butterflies are drab. They're gray or white or brown. Some of them even look like dead leaves to help them hide from hungry birds. Well, that's very clever, but not always the colors that we're used to. Some butterflies are noisy. If you walk past a red cracker butterfly, prepare for a surprise. It may fly towards you and make a noise with its wings. Crack, crack. 
pretty peculiar, right? Oh, but there's so much more I haven't told you. You can still turn back. You can close this book. It's up to you. What do you say? Should we close it? Oh. Okay. Prepare to get weirded out. Butterflies are shapeshifters. Baby butterflies hatch from eggs. Hello, world! They're called caterpillars. They eat and grow. Nom, 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 nom. When they get big enough, their skin hardens and they turn into chrysalises. Under the hard shell, they grow new body parts. Hmm, how many legs should I make? I'll try six. Soon they burst through the shell. Now they have wings. Time to fly. Some caterpillars are carnivorous. Caterpillars love to eat and eat. Most caterpillars chomp on leaves, but some of them are meat eaters. They hunt bugs. Grrr. Some caterpillars are stinky. A giant swallowtail caterpillar looks like bird poop. When somebody frightens it, the caterpillar sticks out too stinky tentacles to scare them away. This friendship stinks. Some caterpillars are sneaky. The Alcon Blue caterpillar smells and sounds like an ant. Ants think that the caterpillar is an ant too. The ants babysit the caterpillar until it grows up. Hey, you're not an ant. No, I'm a fraudulent. Well, now you know the truth. You don't have to hear any more. Goodbye. So long. Have a nice day. No, no. There's still more story. Should we keep going? Oh, you're still here. Do you want to learn more? Fine. Here comes the really strange stuff. Some butterflies have butts that look like heads. Huh? This is the red banded hair streak. Can you guess which end is the front and which is the back? It's tricky. The butterfly's back wings have fake eyes and antenna. The butterfly waggles its back wings in the air. A hungry spider thinks the butterfly's butt is its head and attacks the butt. The butterfly escapes sometimes leaving part of its butt behind. <laughs> Fooled you. <laughs> Butterflies taste with their feet. A monarch butterfly mom stomps on a plant to taste the leaves. If they're yummy, she lays her eggs on them. She's making sure that her babies will have lots of food to eat once they hatch. My feet say it's sweet. What if your grown-up stuck their feet in your cereal before you ate it? Oh, oh, some butterflies eat poop. Yeah, they snack on salt and other tasty stuff from big piles of animal dung. Mm -mm -mm. I sure love a poopy picnic. Some butterflies drink tears. They sip on the water that drips from an animal's eyes. Tears are salty and they need salt to stay healthy. Hmm, interesting. Well, now you know the truth. We butterflies are complicated. We're gross, we're amazing, we're just like you. And just like you, we're beautiful, too. The end. <laughs> and now, let's explore butterflies. 
I took a visit to a butterfly wonderland and got to see lots of them flying around. Some butterflies are colorful and some butterflies are drab. Let's see if we can find some colorful butterflies at the exhibit. We're here at Butterfly Wonderland. Let's explore, learn about butterflies, and see what colors we can find. Come on. Outside, I saw a butterfly statue and a giant caterpillar. Now let's go inside and see what we can find. When you enter, you see a room full of butterfly chrysalises. All these different kinds of butterflies have different chrysalises, different shapes, different colors, and different sizes. We even saw some that were emerging to their final form, the adult butterfly. Butterflies start as eggs laid on a leaf. Then they become larvae, or what we know as caterpillars. After that, they find a safe place to form a J shape to create their chrysalis. As a pupa, they wrap themselves up and wait for five days to several months before they emerge as an adult. That's the butterfly's metamorphosis. Butterflies are shapeshifters. Now, let's enter the butterfly rainforest habitat. Here, they keep the temperature warm and it's very humid, so the butterflies stay comfortable. Now, let's see what colors we can find. Let's try to find the colors of the rainbow. Here. I see red. A butterfly landed on me and it was blue. Ah, let's take a quick rest and keep looking. Right here, I see an orange butterfly. We also saw fish swimming in a pond. These were colorful fish. Do you think we can find a yellow butterfly too? Here's one, yellow. Now there's a butterfly hiding here. Do you see one? What color is it? Oh, it's right here. Very small and very dark. It's indigo. We saw more patterns and colors, stripes and spots. And our last rainbow color, green. I walked around some more and saw more animal friends. We also saw lots of different butterflies feasting on flowers and fruit. It was a wonderful day at the Butterfly Wonderland. Butterflies are true works of art. And just as we were saying goodbye, a very familiar caterpillar friend. <laughs> we 
Will you draw and paint with me? Let's create a butterfly work of art. If you'd prefer, I have a printable coloring page on my website. The link is in the description box. Today, let's paint. For this project, you'll need paper. I'm using watercolor paper, but use whatever you have. A pencil to draw with, a marker to outline, scissors, and optional glue. Now something to color with. If you're painting like me, you'll need watercolor paints, brushes, and two containers of water. A paper towel helps too. Take a moment to gather all your materials before we begin. Let's start with our pencil drawing. First, fold your paper in half this way. Press down on the fold. We're going to draw half of a butterfly here on the fold. When we open it up, the two sides will be the same. Butterflies are symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. You can draw it on this side or this side, whichever you prefer. Take your pencil and two fingers. Put them together at the top of the fold and make a tiny mark here. Then, take out three fingers, put them together, and put them at the bottom of the fold. Make a mark here. This will help you draw the body of your butterfly. Right here at the top mark, we'll draw half of the head. Let's draw half of a circle, like this. Now from the bottom of the head, Draw half of a long, narrow oval shape, right down to where you made the bottom mark. This is the butterfly's body. You should have half a head and half a body sitting right on the fold. Now take three fingers again at the bottom of the body and make a small dot. Let's draw the first large wing and end at that dot. From the head, go out all the way to the edge of the paper and over. I tried to go as far as I could and made a little dip. Now, follow that same wing line and go down, meet the bottom dot again. The wings should be touching here. Touch, 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 and down. Back to the bottom dot. Now the antenna. Remember, this is just half of the butterfly, so we'll draw one antenna. Up. Curl down, now go around, and down again. One more time, a little bit slower. Up, curl down, around, and down again. We have half of a butterfly. Now, let's cut it out. I'm starting with the trickiest part. That's using my big grown-up scissors to cut a very small antenna. You might need help from a grown-up or use small kid scissors. 
That'll be easier to get around the tiny curves of the antenna. You could also cut them off completely and add them later with extra paper, pipe cleaners, or anything else you can find. Cut around your pencil drawing. When you meet the wings, don't cut through them. Stop there where they meet and cut around. And now the trickiest part, the very small antenna. And now comes the magic symmetry. When you open on the fold, ta-da! The same on both sides. Now, there are two ways to continue your butterfly. One way is to trace this cutout onto a new piece of paper. We'll use this cutout like a stencil. Get a new piece of paper and put your butterfly on top. Take your pencil and hold the butterfly while you trace around. I move my hand and fingers along while I trace. That helps keep the butterfly flat and my pencil on course. Make any adjustments you need to. I changed the size of this antenna to be just a bit more narrow. Now you can fill in the shape of the head, finish the circle, and create that long oval shape. Next, connect the top wing and bottom wing with a line like this. Now you've got a brand new butterfly on a brand new piece of paper. If you'd like to keep it, take your black marker and outline. I'm going to fill in the antenna to be solid black. Looks great! The second way to make your butterfly is by outlining our original cutout. I'm going to use the back of this pad of paper underneath my cutout. I'll be drawing the outline and some of that black marker will go off the edge and I don't want to mark up my table. I will outline all the same parts, the head, the oval body, the antenna, and connect the wings. Now you have a butterfly that has no background. Whether you traced or outlined, continue with whatever version you like best. Now it's time to design. We'll use a pencil to create some butterfly wing designs. I'm starting at the edge 
and following the curve I made on the wing. I'll do this at the bottom as well. I'll follow the curve. And I'll do the same on this side. Next, I'll draw a line from the bottom of this wing to the middle of the curve. And again over here, from the bottom of the wing to the middle of the curve. Next, I'll draw a straightish line down at the top part of the wing. And here, remember, Butterflies come in all kinds of beautiful designs. You can follow along with me or create your very own. Here I'll make another line at the bottom part of the wing. And do the same on this side. Then I'll make a big circle inside of this part. and match it over here. Now I'll make two other circles, one slightly bigger and one small. Bigger on the outside, smaller closer to the body. Now I'm going to make some long, kind of raindrop shapes, pointed, round, and pointed again. Start with a point, go up, around, and end at the point. We'll make them as symmetrical as possible, but don't worry about being exact. And remember, when we draw in pencil, you can always go back Erase and try again until you love it. On these smaller bottom wings, I'm going to create a bigger raindrop shape with a wider base from the point around and out back to the same point. When you're happy with all of your drawings and all of your designs, you can draw the face. I'm lining up the butterfly's eyes with the antenna and creating a nice sweet smile. When you're all finished and satisfied with your design, it's time to add color. Crayons, colored pencils, markers, or paint, whatever you have, let's get our colors out. If you're painting like me, make sure to have two different containers of water. One for dirty water and one that stays clean. A paper towel and brushes. I'm using some brushes that are smaller. These small brushes will fit into the tinier details of my butterfly. And the larger brushes will fit onto the larger parts of the body or wings. When we watercolor, we can start with water like this. Painting water on the page first before color will create a lighter color and the paint will spread easier. Like this. You can always add more paint on top if you want it darker. Now I'll go in straight to the paint without putting water first. It'll look like this. The color will be darker and the paint won't slip slide around quite as easily. There's no right or wrong way. It just depends on what you prefer.
After painting these two, one with more water and one with less, I decided to add more color to the top by borrowing from the bottom shape. Watercolors can be layered as many times as you like. The more paint, the darker the color. The more water, the lighter the color. Try experimenting to see what result you like. Now I'll go in on the other wing and do the same. I decided to start with yellow because it's a lighter color. Now I'll go in with a larger brush and put down some water on this segment of the wing. I decided to make this one yellow too, so I'm starting with all the yellow I'm going to use on my butterfly. When you start with the lightest colors, it makes it easier to layer a darker color next to it. Experiment with holding your brush like a pencil closer to the bottom or closer to the middle or top and see what feels good. Now I'll take this bigger brush to do my next lightest color, orange. I decided to make this part of the lower wings orange. In between colors, I rinse off the brush in the dirty water cup and dip back into the clean water cup before I get a new color. You can kind of notice parts of the wing have a darker orange puddle and parts are lighter. When we watercolor, you can dip into those paint puddles and spread the paint around or leave them just the way they are. That's the beauty of painting. You get to choose the result you like best. I decided to make these circles orange as well. So I switched to a smaller brush.
Now I'm painting with green to paint the bottom of these lower wings. I switched to a smaller brush about halfway through because I realized it feels easier to paint this shape with a smaller brush. So I'm going back to the other side and filling in some of the spots that I want to be darker. With that same smaller brush, I'm going to paint the part around these yellow shapes. Again, I tried some different techniques. More water over here and less water over here. I liked the way the left looked, so I'm going to add more color to the right. Next, this area around my orange circles, I'm making red. If you accidentally overlap the paint and want to fix it, you can add plain water and just wipe it away. I went back in with my yellow color to cover up that spot that lost its paint. And we're good as new! There are no mistakes in art. Only happy accidents! Now I'll make these smaller circles red as well. Remember, more paint equals darker color. More water equals a lighter color. Now for the edge of these wings, I'm going in with my darkest color yet, blue! Very carefully, I'm tracing along the edge. And since I'm using my darkest color at the end, it will cover up any lighter color that spilled over the edge. I'll add blue to the lower wings as well.
And now I'm going back in with a smaller brush and the same blue color to add an extra layer of color. Now to change from blue to my next color, purple, I'll rinse my brush in the dirty water, pat, pat, pat on the paper towel and dip into the clean water again. I'm using this purple around my red circles here on the top wing. And repeat on this side. Now for my butterfly's body, I'm going to start with a layer of plain water before I go in with my color because I don't want it to be too dark and cover up its face. I'm using a touch of black. When I realized I had too much color, I wiped some off on the paper towel. And now I'll spread around just that little bit of black all over the body and face. Next, I go back into any colors that I want to be more vibrant by doing just another layer of paint. Don't forget to rinse your brush off between colors. When you're satisfied with the result, it's time to let that paint dry completely. Your cat may want to join in and see the process. When it's completely dry, you'll take your outlining marker and just go over all the edges and lines of your butterfly. This will clean up any paint marks that got on the lines and make it really crisp and defined. This part's optional. You can skip it if you want. Now side by side, here's the part with no outline and the part with an outline. So you can decide which look you like best. I decided to go ahead and finish outlining all the designs I made. That is one happy, colorful butterfly. Great job, friends!
The Little Red Hen Written by Mary Finch Illustrated by Kate Slater Once upon a time, a rooster and a mouse and a little red hen lived together in a small brown house with a red roof. One day, the little red hen found a grain of wheat lying on the ground. Look what I found, she said to the rooster and the mouse. I will plant it in the earth. Who will help me? Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself said the little red hen. She scratched at the earth and planted the grain. Who will help me water it? asked the little red hen. Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. She watered the earth and waited for the wheat to grow. The sun shone and the wheat grew tall and straight. When the ear of wheat was golden, she asked, who will help me harvest it? Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. She picked the ear of wheat and put it in a basket. Who will help me take it to the mill to be ground into flour? Asked the little red hen. Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. The miller ground the ear of wheat into fine white flour. Who will help me make this flour into dough? Asked the little red hen. Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. She mixed the flour into warm, yeasty dough. Who will help me knead this dough into bread? Asked the little red hen. Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. She kneaded the dough again, left it to rise, then shaped it into a round, shiny loaf. Who will help me put this loaf into the oven? asked the little red hen. Not I, said the rooster. Not I, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. She put the loaf into the oven to bake. When it was ready, she took out the warm, crusty loaf. Who will help me eat this tasty, fresh bread? Asked the little red hen. I will, said the rooster. I will, said the mouse. No, you won't, said the little red hen. I shall eat it myself said the little red hen. And she did. Oh, said the rooster. Oh, said the mouse. You didn't help me, so I ate it myself, said the little red hen. So the next time the little red hen found a grain of wheat lying on the ground, the rooster scratched at the earth and planted the grain. The mouse watered the earth. 
and together, the rooster and the mouse and the little red hen watched the wheat grow tall and straight. Together, they took the wheat to the miller to grind it into flour. And together, they mixed the flour to make the dough. And when the bread was ready, the rooster and the mouse and the little red hen sat down together and ate the nice warm loaf. And it was delicious! The end. Three little pigs, one, two, three. Three little pigs, one, two, three. Three little pigs, one, two, three. Three little pigs. One pig built a house of straw. Straw, straw, straw. Along came the wolf, I'll blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The straw fell down as the wolf blew, and then there were two. Two little pigs, one, two. Two little pigs, one, two. Two little pigs, one, two. Two little pigs. One, two. Two little pigs. One pig built a house of sticks. Sticks, sticks, sticks. Along came the wolf, I'll blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The sticks came down, the house was done. And then there was one. One little pig, one. One little pig, one. One little pig, one. One pig built a house of bricks, 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 bricks. Along came the wolf, I'll blow your house in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <gasps> the wolf couldn't blow the brick house in, and all of the that are wiggly? <laughs> Today, we're going to meet lots of different animals and we will ask them, are you wiggly? Let's see who's first. Oh, hi, rabbit. Friends, let's ask. Ready? Are you wiggly? No. I'm a hoppy. <gasps> hop, hop, hop. <laughs> I am hoppy. I am hoppy. I go hop, hop, hop across the grass. I am hoppy, not wiggly. I go hop, hop, hop across the grass. Friend, can you be hoppy too? How about with some bunny ears? Hop, hop, hop. Yeah. Let's see who's next. Ah. Hi, bird. And let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm flappy. I am flappy. I'm flappy. I go flap, flap, flap high in the sky. I am flappy, not wiggly. I go flap, flap, 
flap high in the sky. Oh, bird's not wiggly. Bird is flappy. Friends, can you flap like a bird? Flap, flap, flap. <laughs> Hi, butterfly. Let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm fluttery. Oh. I am fluttery. I'm fluttery. I go flutter, flutter, flutter above the ground. I am fluttery, not wiggly. I go flutter, flutter, flutter above the ground. Whoa, butterfly's not wiggly. Butterfly is fluttery. Friends, can you flutter like a butterfly? <gasps> flutter, flutter, flutter. <laughs> oh. Hi, snake. Let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm slithery. I am slithery. I'm slithery. I go slither, slither, slither on the rocks. I am slithery, not wiggly. I go slither, slither, slither on the rocks. So, snake is slithery, not wiggly. Friends, can you slither like a snake? Slither, slither, slither. <laughs> Hi, frog. Let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm jumpy. I am jumpy. I am jumpy. I go jump, jump. Jump around the pond. I am jumpy, not wiggly. I go jump, jump, jump around the pond. Oh, frog's not wiggly. Frog is jumpy. Jump, jump, jump. Friends, can you jump like the frog? Jump, jump, jump. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, dragonfly. Let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm hovery. I am hovery. I am hovery. I go hover, hover, hover in the air. I am hovery, not wiggly. I go hover. Hover, hover in the air. Oh, dragonfly's not wiggly. Dragonfly is hovery. Hmm. Friends, can you be hovery like a dragonfly? Zoop. Hovery. Hover is where your wings move, but you stay pretty still in the same place. Hover. 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 Hi, fish. Let's ask, are you wiggly? No, I'm swimmy. I am swimmy. I'm swimmy. I go swim, swim, swim under the water. I am swimmy, not wiggly. I go swim, swim, Swim under the water. Oh, fish isn't wiggly. Fish is swimmy. Friends, can you swim like the fish? Swim, 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 swim. <laughs> oh, hi, spider. Let's ask. Are you wiggly? No, I'm spinny. I am spinny. I am spinny. I go spin, 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 
go spin, 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 making my web. I am spinny, not wiggly. I go spin, 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 making my web. Oh, spider's not wiggly. Spider is spinny. Friends, can you be spinny like the spider? Spin, spin, spin your web. Spin, spin, spin. Oh, hi, worm. Let's ask, are you wiggly? Yes, I'm wiggly. I am wiggly. I am wiggly. I go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle in the dirt. I am wiggly. I am wiggly. I go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle in the dirt. <laughs> yes! Worm is wiggly! Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I know someone who's even wigglier. Huh? Wigglier than a worm? Who could that be? <gasps> you are! <laughs> oh, friends, will you be wiggly with me? Let's try it. We are wiggly. We are wiggly. We go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle like a worm. We are wiggly. We are wiggly. We go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle like a worm. <laughs> polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. <laughs> lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. <laughs> flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. <coughs> leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. What do you hear? I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. <laughs> walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear?
by Esme Shapiro. Uko. I am Uko. I am a fox. I live here under this log. I have a stick. I have a leaf. I have a rock. But I do not have a friend to play with. Find a friend in this hole? No. On top of this tree? No. Under this moose? Not here either. Aha! There's someone! Another fox! Playing with a furless Two-legged fox. Ooh. Debbie, watch out! Oh, so that's what they call them. Debbies. I want the Debbie too. Debbies don't like me very much. What do the other foxes have that I don't? Maybe the Debbies like this one because he is spotted. I can have spots too. No problemo! I bet the Debbie's like this fox because her fur is pink and fluffy! I can have pink fluff too! Easy peasy! Ah, I'm sure the Debbie's like this fox because of his big floppy ears. Voila! I can have big ears too. Hey, I look pretty good. No Debbie can resist me now. Yoo-hoo, Ruthie. Is that you? I can't see. My glasses aren't working. Nope, I'm not rude. Actually, yes. Yes, I am Ruthie. Let's play. But uh, maybe not this game. This game is too itchy! This game is too tight! I hate to say it, but Debbies aren't very good at games. looks funny. Uh, it's an itchy game I'm playing with my Debbie. Who are you? I am Umi. I'm a raccoon. I live here, under this rock. This is my stick. This is my other stick. And this is my other, other stick. Wanna play? Oh my 
crickets. Let's play stick. Ruthie, where's your sweater? Silly dog. Let's get out of here. I don't need to look like the other foxes to find a friend. I would much rather be stinky and play stick. Then be squeaky clean and play itchy games. But hey, to each their own, right? To each their own. The very busy spider, the very busy spider, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web. The cow went moo, the horse went nay, but all she did was keep spinning all the very busy spider, the very busy spider, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web. The sheep went ba ba, the goat went ma ma, but she kept on spinning la la la. The very busy spider, the very busy spider, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web. The dog said woof, woof, woof. The cat cried meow, meow. She kept on spinning and it had to be the very busy spider, the very busy spider, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web, spins a silky thread, spins a silky web. The duck said quack, quack, quack. The rooster went cock a doodle doo. The owl went who, who, who built this web, who. The spider didn't answer, she'd gone to bed. The very busy spider, the very sleepy spider. Will you help Doug find his dog? What do you say, friends? Can you help? Let's try. Will you help Doug find his dog? By Jane Caston and Carmen Saldana. This is Doug. He has lost his dog. Poor Doug. Doug's face is sad. He's holding a leash, but it's empty. But hey, we can help, right? Hey! Will you help Doug find his dog? What do you say, friends? Will you help? You will? Great! I wonder what Doug's dog looks like. Let's ask Doug. What does your dog look like, Doug? My dog is Scruffy. Hmm. When you think of Scruffy, what kind of dog comes to mind? Oh, maybe some longer hair sticking out? Yeah! So, Doug's dog is a Scruffy dog. Whoa, look at all these dogs! Do you see any 
that are scruffy. Call here, Scruff, to all the scruffy dogs. Let's try it, friends. Let's call here, Scruff. Ready? Here, Scruff. Spots, Doug? Yes, my dog has spots. Can you find the spotted dogs? Ooh, can we? Yes, give the spotted dogs a pat. Yes, let's look at these dogs. Which ones have spots? Pat, pat, pat. Pat. Ah, they liked that. Now we have scruffy, spotted dogs. Oh, but still many that could be Doug's. One of these dogs must belong to Doug. Mm, what size is your dog, Doug? Is he big or small? My dog is small. Ah. From all these dogs, we see that some are standing big and tall. And some are down here. They're small. Let's find the small dogs. Can you tickle the small dogs? Will you help? Okay, let's tickle gently. Tickle, 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 and this one. Tickle, tickle. That's it. They love being tickled. Aww. Now we have scruffy, spotted, small dogs left. Still, we don't know which one is Doug's dog. What else can you tell us about your dog, Doug? My dog has a big wet nose and a long tail. Ah, can you find him? Hmm, give the dog with the big wet nose and the long tail a big kiss. I see a big wet nose here and a big wet nose here and a big wet nose here. Now let's look at the tails. This one's like a little pom-pom, but it is short. This one's fluffy, but also short, and thi this one is long. This one! Let's give this dog a big kiss. <laughs> oh, he's giving you a big kiss, too. No. <laughs> Hey, Doug, is this your dog? No, this dog is scruffy and spotted and small. This dog has a big wet nose and a long tail. Yeah, yeah, but my dog is white, not brown. Oh. Oh dear, this dog is very dirty and very wet. Hey, look friends. I see muddy paw prints. Mud is brown and this dog has brown. <gasps> Give the book a great big shake. Go ahead. Friends, you can help too. You can hold your hands up and shake with me. Ready? 
Go! Shake! 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 Let's see. <laughs> Look! Shake! Shake! The mud is coming off! Yes! That is my dog! Woohoo! You found Doug's dog! Now Doug is happy! And look, he's getting a big kiss too! Thank you! Bye, Doug! Bye, Doug's dog! Uh oh! He's headed straight for the mud again. Well, at least they found each other. <laughs> the end. Panda bear, panda bear, what do you see? I see a bald eagle soaring by me. Buffalo charging by me. Stomp, stomp, <sighs> stomp, stomp. <sighs> water buffalo, water buffalo, what do you see? I see a spider monkey swinging by me. Ooh, ooh, ha! Ah! Ooh, ooh, ha! Ah! Ooh, ooh, ha, ah, ha, ah, ah! ha! Spider monkey, spider monkey, what do you see? I see a green sea turtle swimming by me. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Green sea turtle, green sea turtle, what do you see? I see a macaroni penguin strutting by me. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Macaroni penguin. Told by Anne Marie Riley Gurton. Illustrations by Helena Perez Garcia. Many years ago, before the world bloomed in magnificent colors, the earth lay stark and gray. The animals that graced its skies and roamed its lands were the colors of dirt, clay, and stone. To prepare Earth for its awakening, a great rain fell upon the land. It rained for many days and nights. On the eleventh day, as if by magic, the rain stopped. As the clouds gave way, the animals looked up to see a rainbow peering down at them. Awestruck, the animals watched as the bow of light bent toward the earth. 
As rainbows shimmered down, she turned everything in her path into bright, bold colors. The fish in the ocean waters glinted silver, violet, and aquamarine. The yellow duck paddled in the sapphire blue of the pond, and the red fox scurried through the amber forest. Gazing upon the beauty below him, Great Bird, ruler of the bird kingdom, called out to Rainbow. He was tired of his stone gray feathers and wished to be a beautiful color. Rainbow agreed, and with one swift kiss, she turned Great Bird from gray to shimmering gold. The other birds gathered around, and they began to beg and plead for colors of their own. Please, Rainbow, we want to be as beautiful as the other animals. Please give us color, too. Hearing their cries, Rainbow agreed. Great Bird called the birds together and lined them up. The birds chirped and chattered, worried that all of Rainbow's colors would be taken. Fearing he'd be last, Parrot, the loudest of all the birds, pushed his way to the front of the line. Green! Make me green! He called out in his screechy voice. Green like the frog that leaps in the pond! I want to be green like the rolling hills below, and green like the cactus so spectacular against the barren desert. And with one swift kiss from Rainbow, Parrot shimmered like an emerald. One by one, Rainbow gave color to each of the birds. Cardinal, a vibrant red like the fire's flame. Blue Jay, a shadowy blue like the ocean's hidden depths. And Canary, a brilliant yellow like the sun's dawning rays. Rainbow worked hard to please the birds. Soon, the world below her and the skies around her gleamed with the magnificent colors she'd once had. But Rainbow began to grow weary from her hard work. Her colors began to dim until, finally, every last drop of color had been used. As the birds took flight, Great Bird noticed one small gray bird standing before him. Come forward, little Gouldian Finch, he said. Why are you still the color of stone? Do you not wish for a color of your own? Finch hung his head. Oh, Great Bird, I waited patiently for my turn, and now all the colors have been chosen. I fear I will be gray forever. Tears began to stream down Finch's cheeks. Great Bird paused for a moment, thinking about Finch's words. He gazed at the beautiful birds around him and said, Little Gouldian Finch sat patiently, awaiting his turn. We all shouted and begged to get what we desired. Now there is no color left for him. The other birds felt sad for their finch friend. They chirped and tweeted until one of them piped up. How can we right this wrong? No sooner had the words been spoken than Rainbow bent down and gathered a splash of color from each of the birds. With one swift kiss, Rainbow worked her magic. When Finch opened his eyes, he looked down in astonishment. His once gray feathers sparkled brilliantly with every color of the rainbow. And legend has it that from that moment on, the Gouldian Finch became known as the most beautiful bird in the world. The end. Thank you for reading with me today. All the birds in this story are real birds. They all have their own colors. 
And they all have their own song. Let's listen to the parrot. Let's listen to the cardinal. Let's listen to the blue jay. Let's listen to the canary. And now, let's listen to the most colorful bird in our story, the golden finch. Today, let's draw and paint a picture together, like this. If you prefer, I have a printable coloring page on my website. The link is in the description box. Today, let's paint. You'll need paper, a pen or marker to outline, some paints, I'm using watercolor, and brushes. If you're using watercolor, try to get clean water and dirty water for paints. If you're not painting, you can use other colors. A paper towel helps when you're using a wet brush. I'm going to tape down the sides of my paper so it doesn't get crinkly when I add the wet paint. To draw, put your left hand on the paper. Open your fingers. See where your pointer finger is? That's where the bird's head will go. Imagine we'll draw a circle here for the bird's head. Now pick up your marker or pen. Go to your pointer finger and draw a small circle about this big. Next, the bird's beak. We'll go out and back in a triangle shape. Out and back. Let's make our bird happy. I'm giving him a smile. <laughs> Next, the bird's eye. We'll draw three circles. One, a little smaller. Two, even smaller. Three, the number two circle will get filled in with black. Ta-da! Now the bird's body. We'll make an upside down raindrop shape. Out and to a point. Round and point. Let's grab our pen and go round and down. From this point, we can come back up or from the head down to the point. I'll go this way. Whoop. Next, the bird's wings. We want to be sure our wings will fit. See where the head meets the body? Use your hand like a pretend wing. If it points up, boo boo, we'll run out of paper. Make it point out to the side. This line is about the size of your finger. And curve down. We'll do the same thing this way. Make a pretend wing. And draw a line. And down. Those are so tiny! We need bigger feathers for the ends of the wings. Let's start with this wing. And make long, pointy feather shapes all the way around. Around and around and around the wing. Pointy, 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 stop! Now let's make smaller round feathers. We'll try to touch the line here. Touch. See that? Let's try it with all the others. Touch, touch, touch. Touch. Touch, touch, that one's long. 
touch, touch. Good. This side. Let's make our long pointy feathers. Around and around and around the wing. Pointy, 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 stop. And now let's touch. Just like last time. Touch. 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 Okay, we're ready for the tail. Let's make three small pointy feathers. One, two, three. And now a big fluffy feathered tail. Use the same long pointy shapes. Around and around and around the tail. Pointy, 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 stop. On the bird's tummy, we'll make round feather shapes like a letter U. One U, double U, triple U, huh? Another double U. And now the bird's head. Let's make some tall pointy feathers on its head. You did it! Now it's time to color. I'm using watercolor paints, but you can use whatever you have. I'll try to match the colors from the book. Green wings and a green tail, a yellow tummy, a purple and blue neck, a red head, and an orange beak. Remember to make your bird however you like. One way to use watercolors is starting with just plain water. Yeah, you can use your brush to paint on some invisible clear water. This helps the paint spread around. I'll dip into my clean water and get the yellow color. Lightly and carefully, just like I'm using a crayon or pencil, I'll fill in the parts I want yellow. Clean it off in the dirty water and tap, tap, tap on the towel. To change color, dip in the clean water again and now I'll use green. I'm trying to use the lighter colors first. I'm painting green on the small part of the wing. the small part of the tail. Rinse, tap, 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 and get some clean water to change colors. I'll use a darker green for the feathers on the wings. And the feathers on the tail. Same for this wing over here. Rinse. Something I like about watercolors is you can mix the colors up a little. So now I'm going back with my lighter green and putting it on top of the darker green. When they mix together, they make a whole new green. Try experimenting with your paints at home. Now rinse, pat, 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 and grab clean water for a new color. I'll use purple for my bird's neck, just like the bird from the story we read, the Gouldian Finch. If you need more color, grab more water and dip back in. To change, rinse, 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 tap, 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 and get some new clean water. Now it's time for the blue part of the neck. I changed my brush to smaller because this part is small. Rinse, tap, and change. I'm using orange to go on top of the tummy and make some of the feathers pop. And 
orange for the beak, too. Rinse. Tap, tap, tap. Clean water. Now I'll use red for the head. <laughs> red head. That rhymes. I'm being very careful with my small brush, especially around the eye. Then I rinsed and changed colors back to the light green for the bird's head feathers. Just for fun, I added some yellow too. Mixing colors is fun. There. Now just like an artist, we're going to sign our name in the corner. That's called your autograph. My autograph looks like this. B-R-I spells Bree. And I like to put a happy face. There, all done.